it's snowing today in Kansas, and that's a good day for a scotch review. Today I'd like to bring to your attention, for tasting, Royal Brackle. I had purchased this mm, three weeks ago probably, when I was in Kansas City. It's the only time I'd ever seen it. Locally, I haven't seen it. I paid $46.99 for it. was neat. Thought I'd give it a spin and see what it's like. I've already gave her one taste. Or two or three or four. About four. Four drams so far off of it. And I particularly like it. I think it's a very good dram. It is 12 years old. 40% alcohol by volume. It is it states on there both sherry and bourbon casks, and I can taste the sherry casks in it. Oh, the, already starting to get the steam on the glass. It is a uh, amber, medium amber color to it. It's a rather, rather darker dram. Visual. Clings really well to the side of the glass. Little bit of slow legs running down. So the viscosity and the oiliness is there. Uh, go to my notes real quick on the subject. Uh, the Royal Brackla is a distillery. I believe it's a Royal Warden distillery by William the Fourth. Uh, I was hoping it had a date. 1812 was the date. I will, uh, shoot, I can't think of his name. I have it down here in my notes. William Fraser, actually. William Fraser built it in 1812. It was a distillery. It's a highland just outside the space side region, just to the west side, on the northern end of things. Uh, it's the Cowder Estate, is where the distillery lies. It was the setting for Macbeth and the Thane of Cowder. Cawdor. I don't know exactly how to say that. Cawdor, I think is how it's said. Again, 1835, William IV granted a royal warden for it. And Queen Victoria reaffirmed the order. I think it was 1838. I should have wrote that one down. Anyway, the distillery was modernized in 1965. It was closed in 1983 reopened in 91 refurbished and then it was uh, again sold to Bacardi with all the Dewars, Dewars uh, stuff because it is a malt Dewars uses in their blends and that was sold in 1998 and that's just a little short history on the distillery Distillery uses tall stills, line arms tilt up, which gives it a lighter, a lighter uh, spirit. Uh, slightly peaty on the barley that they use, and they do state in one of the references I looked up that they do use a longer fermentation time. And I believe the reference was 74 hours, 73, 74 hours, which. I really don't know what that means in fermentation time, how long they normally ferment, what's the normal, what's the extended, those things I really don't know about it. Anyway, a lot of that information came out of a book I just got. Came out of the Whiskey Classified 10th edition. I haven't really read much on it. I looked this up in there. It was rather interesting. Uh, I'm still working on another book. It was a used book from Amazon, it's slightly damaged, but for the price, I believe uh, it's not hurting anything. Just a little bit of corner bump on it. So I got it for a good price off Amazon. So anyway, I've been buying a lot of books lately and reading them. And I'll cover more of that later in another review. And there is a picture of the distillery if you want to or can see it. We'll see how it turns out. I'm using a different camera today, so this is going to be interesting. 
All right, back to my notes on this. It is, it is a sherry influenced scotch, but you still get the caramelization, I think. And it states in there, it's both sherry and bourbon cask influence. Because I can't get some of the bourbon cask influence off of it. Caramelization, a little bit of the apples. Then it brings dried raisins, plums. It's a little spicy on the nose. Uh, maybe a little allspice. A little allspice. It really isn't in the nutmeg, quite the nutmeg or the cinnamon room. That's, I put more of an allspice on it. It's not flat floral like cardamom brings. Maybe a little tarragon. And I go with allspice. That's that's what that's what my nose is telling me. Flavor. Again, raisins, plums, dried cherries, slight bit of saltiness, just a faint wisp of smoke in the background. It's a good, solid, even mouth coating. Mouth coating is very, very good. It's not overpowering. It's not off-putting. It's lasting in the mouth coating, and the, and the finish is lasting. Uh, again, allspice, definitely allspice. Uh, maybe a little touch of bittersweet chocolate. Bittersweet chocolate and uh, orange, orange peel. Yes, you get a little citrus orange peel in there. And you know something I don't get in my notes? But think of the orange. Uh, you can get teas, flavored teas. And you can get an orange peel, orange, I think it's called orange pico tea. That's the orange spring. It's got a, it's got a tea taste. It's bringing the tea with it. That's interesting. Anyway, I find it to be a very interesting gram. We'll add just a hair bit of water to this. Lynn's picking up a little bit. Slow and easy. It's a little cold out here. It's about 30. It's barely freezing. Probably 32 degrees. 33 tops. It's a beautiful day though. I like snow. Always have. The raisins, orange, definitely tea flavor. Those are coming to the front now. There's a saltiness. And a little touch of black pepper. Overall, it's an interesting dram. I like the stuff. I think it's a, I think it was money well spent. I really like it. So, finish it off. We'll give it an 85 out of 100. It's a solid score. It's a good even score. Not spectacular. But for the price, a good everyday dram. I really think you could do a lot worse. Well, folks, remember, the spirit in the glass is not running from you. Take it slow, easy, slip it, sip, and enjoy. Because there's plenty more if you run out. Till next time, this is Robert. I'm signing off. Good afternoon. It's really sticking. It's good.